Coach, we find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the London Black Knights and the Denver Broncos. Two clubs here, each looking to rebound from a week one loss as we're underway on EA Sports. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. taken down but not before they work it across midfield a very solid gain of 27 they've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production but I would dare say that this week in practice there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency and that was a good start getting the playmakers involved you mentioned that to me pre-game that's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. inside the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Back to throw now on first down. Escaping the pressure right. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. No grounding call there. He had a receiver near the right sideline. It was pretty clear there. He just needed to get rid of that one. And he did have a receiver in the area, but initially my view was obstructed, and I thought that was going to be grounding, but clearly the correct call made, and that is no call. Is that why you threw your play sheet down? Is that why you did it? Is that the flag? You be giving me up. I got a lot of issues up here in the boot. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. This will be their first trip to the red zone. They've got it first and goal to go. They'll try to run it in with a duel. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up a shutout. No doubt about it. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. The Broncos say they have it. They do. Pardon me, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20-yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams call from the 10-yard line in the green zone. That's your money zone. He fumbles the ball inside the money zone. You have one job, take care of the ball. That didn't happen. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Brendan Langley there to get him down. And give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front. And to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. 
Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there, a great start. Now we'll see what second down brings. And he's got some space here. And now the rookie's free. 20. And all the way home for the Broncos score. A big play there. 97 yards. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now this offense ready to head back out there. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. That's Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that. And a big loss here as he's taken down. D Ford in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Over, 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 over. Back to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Mullins. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. to throw. Eluding the pressure right. Over the middle complete. That's Doyle. And he's brought down but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. And that one results in 35 yards. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and 10. Detroit! Detroit! From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Now he's flushed out right. Coleman has it here right side. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And let's face it, that what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. And if you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed, the agility, so good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And what's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact and he'll go deep. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. to throw and it's intercepted at the goal line picked off by the linebacker Jalen Smith and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back 
That's now a second interception in as many weeks from his linebacker position. And think about all the different techniques he has to employ in a passing situation. Is he spot dropping because it's zone? Is he picking up man to man? Is he having to run with a running back or a tight end? In any event, great eyes, head on a swivel, and excellent hands. Yeah, versatility and showing those hands. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. He had the big touchdown run on the first drive and more room to maneuver right there. And the big guys up front, they're feeling chesty and strong, creating nice openings for him. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. To throw on second down. Frost into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl to Luke Kinkley that picks it. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. He had a little bit of the turnover bug last week. Three interceptions. Not an absolute disaster, but another one here. Do you start to get a little worried? You worry about your team as a whole because... You have to find a way to make those interceptions quote-unquote go away, and that means your defense. They've got to go out there on sudden change and at least hold people to field goals. And if that keeps happening, they lose confidence in the quarterback, and then no one plays well. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. This is Coleman with a ground. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 12 yards there as they move the chains. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about Detroit, how far you let Detroit. your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Go on, go on. Go on, go on. Detroit! Detroit! Ah. On first down, a duel. Showed some tough running, but they'll drop him at the five-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they've bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Go on, go on! Go on, go on! A second down run for Abdullah. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Amir Abdullah, his second touchdown on the season. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. Then they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. Now they'll run it on the toss. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. When we talk about Luke Keekley, you can't talk about his overall game without talking about his intelligence and how he controls the whole defense. He quarterbacks that right, now, defense and at times will actually make checks just like a quarterback would on offense to get them into Detroit, the right defense. Detroit. They definitely were on that play. How about that finish? Holding that to a minimal gain. Looking to throw. Foss looking left side and he's got a man. That's Grant. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Now they'll run it on the toss. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Four down, four down. 
Now they'll run it on the toss. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on run downs. It confuses the blocking assignments and doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Looking to throw on second down. Fox. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall that's back on anymore. Party. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Hot. Hot. They'll run it now out of the gun. Yeah, he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. All right, I need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. He'll look to throw. Got a man, he finds Sanders. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Over, 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 over. They'll look to throw here. Over the middle, the catch by Coleman. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As they'll stop the clock with 24 Detroit. seconds to go in this first half. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Watch it now, Barney. Barney. They'll drop the throw. And a big loss here as he's taken down. D Ford in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. Now that after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Watch it now, Barney, Barney. Now a shotgun snap as they look to throw. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. 
We now proceed to the start of the second half. So we're at halftime here in Denver with the Broncos leading this one. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Good starting position for the Broncos here as they come up first and ten. Now they'll run it on the toss. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Malik Jackson there to make the stop. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. On third down, it's Grant, and he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line they'll wind up losing three yards here and that'll make this a second and 13. all right now lucky 56 lucky 56 gone 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 operating from the gun frost and he whips that one incomplete there the tight end cameron Brait was the target and now it's third down We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays Detroit, on the ball. Detroit. And we see yet another errant throw as a result. Throwing on third and long. Frost. He'll rifle this one deep right side. This is caught inside the 15. And down to the 11. A big play there for the Broncos on third. 41 yards. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. A gain of three, second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Leopard! Leopard! Hot! And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. And the penalty makes this a much more manageable third down, third and two. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave them with some options here on fourth and inches. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They only get a hard-fought yard, but that's all they needed. It pays off the decision to go for it, first and goal. They come up in an offset eye. And they'll turn to a power game to try to get in. Try to ram his way in, but they're going to hold him back at the goal line. No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. 
Another shot from the one on second and goal. They get it to him running left. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the night. And the Broncos will extend their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. Now the point after try for Santos. Santos with the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and take it. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession the drive, of the second the half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Go on, go on, Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Lucky 56! Lucky 56! From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Flush to his right, toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time, and it's third and short. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. Right, when you're trying to throw inside Lucky routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the, the big gun. The in this case, just a little bit too much. Over, 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 over. <laughs> They'll go to the air here on third and two. Flushed out right. They'll let this thing go into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 38, and his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Okay, it's real simple to say from here, but we know that sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to know when to say when and just throw it away. Flushed out to the right, tries to make something out of nothing here, and he winds up putting one downfield that gets intercepted. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now they'll run it on the toss. Room to run past midfield. Welcome back now to Denver. It's Bronco football, and they also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth. Now they'll run it on the toss. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. The tackle made by Derek Rivers. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Kayvon Webster there to make the tackle. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock right, rolling, like so they'll six. take that like one right there. Six. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellows up front in order to bring this one home. To throw on third down, Frost. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Now this offense about ready to take over again. Intended target was Corey Coleman. And that'll bring up second down. I'm sure that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. Call it a gain of four and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Watch it now, Barney. Barney. He'll look to throw. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Chris Jones coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Watch it now, Barney. Barney. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. Dan Quinn's guys unable to come through there on fourth down. Cool. Oh. 